Trash talking in MMA. Now, if you've been watching the sport for a while now, you will remember that there was a long time where UFC fighters tried to take the route of being a respectful guy. And not to be the hater on that, but there's a difference between being a stoic MMA fighter and having the personality of a 2 by 4 Let me give you an example. Yuri Prohaska. Stoic. However... If he spoke English as his first language, you would think he had the tism. Now, we look at fighters nowadays, and they've kind of moved away from taking this, I'm going to be stoic, I'm going to be respectful. MMA is the sport of honor, which I'm going to be real with you. I, I, I've never really understood. A lot of people are going to talk about, well, the Gracies said that. It's like, okay. The Gracies were a bunch of Brazilian guys that knew how to strangle people, and I shit you not, would go to the beats, and whenever they had beef with anybody that was taking their spot because they were surfers, they would just strangle the dude. Like, understand that a lot of Brazilians don't like the Gracies because the Gracies were thugs, dude. Re Hicks and Gracie wrote a book about it, and he was talking about his like, yes, my family was very respectful. My dad was sought in gang violence. Did he have anything to do with it? Yes, he was. Okay, you're not... Let's li stop the honor bullshit. Your family was also kind of a group of thugs, but they were just better at fucking people up than anybody else. That little side tangent out of the way, yes, no, we're going to be great getting a Gracie lore video, if you di haven't already told. But we're going to be talking about the greatest trash talkers in MMA. I've tried to keep it to the modern era, however, there is one fighter that I kind of just had to put on the list because he is in that Mount Rushmore of shit talk. And we'll get to him, and you've probably already guessed his name. But we're going to be going through all of the most well-known trash talkers in the sport. If I went off everybody that said anything that could be remotely construed as trash talk, it would be just about every fighter on the roster. But no. We're going to be taking some of the most notable, some of the best at trash talk, to some of the worst, pathetic excuse of trash talk I've ever heard, putting them into a tier list from D tier being awful, you should be bullied, and to S tier being you are the best. And with that out of the way, with this long-winded intro out of the way, let's get started. We're going to be starting with Colby Covington. Now, before we... I go through every fighter. Let me just preface this because it'll confuse a lot of you before I, I give you this criteria. Not every form of trash talk is the same. Quick example. Colby Covington trash talk is very different from Dominic Cruz trash talk. John Jones trash talk is very different from Strickland trash talk. I think you guys already know what I'm talking about, but I'll give examples as we go on. But before we get to there, let's talk about Colby Covington. Colby Covington has the Chael Sonnen style of trash talk. Pre-rehearsed lines, good production value on his Instagram, and every time he goes into a press conference, 100% he's rehearsing his lines. Now, now, let me just say this. I have zero problems with MMA fighters rehearsing lines for trash talk. A lot of people, like, think that's kind of a bad thing. Like, it's very weird here. Understand, even McGregor was rehearsing his lines. I know that kind of, like, ruins the experience for you, but I don't understand why it would. Because trash talk is trash talk whether you rehearse the lines or not. E Chael tells people to rehearse lines. Now, the thing about Colby Covington that I'm going to be giving credit for, it sounds weird that I'm giving him credit for this, but I, I do like that there really isn't a line that he's not going to cross. And he accepts that. Now, where I will have a problem with Colby Covington, if he did do this, is if he whined if fans were going against him. Colby Covington knows what he is. He knows that he is a troll. He knows that he made his entire career off being a character. Is he genuine? No, and I'm going to dock a point for that. However, if you were to look at just his trash talk, he's pretty damn good. Now, are there times where he goes over the line? Yes. Talking about Leon Edwards' dad is most likely in hell. That's kind of fucked up to do at a press conference. And yeah, you deserve to get a head kick for that. But guess what? He took his beating like a man. Like, I have no problem with trash talk if you're going to take your beating afterwards. It's My problem is, is if you complain that you're not feeling safe is kind of fucked up. That's where I disagree here. Now, for Colby Covington, I'm going to have to put him... I'm going to put him at a mid-A tier to low-A tier. I have to dock a point. Originality is kind of, kind of meh. I, I can't give him that. And I'm going to dock another point. 
Because Kobe Covington does make mistakes. Like, watch the Kobe Covington press conference. The whole reason that he came after Leon Edwards as viciously as he did about his dad is because Leon Edwards made him slip up on a line, and he has, like, that anger that if you make him fuck up, he's going to come after you. Like, that line where he's talking to Kamaru Usman, talking about how you're dead, fake newsman, like, um, is because Kamaru Usman was winning that. Every time Colby Covington would talk, all Kamaru Usman had to say was, I broke your face. And we'll talk about Kamaru Usman later. But that fucked up Colby Covington, because how do you respond to somebody that just broke your jaw? A, a mid to low A tier, but he's not S tier. I can't. Son O'Malley. Dude. I know this one's gonna... Th this one might anger some people, because it's not low enough. But I'm gonna just put him in C tier. Sometimes O'Malley gets a good line off. Every once in a while, O'Malley will get a good line off. But here's the problem. O'Malley doesn't rehearse his lines. He doesn't. 100% he is trying to come up with it on the fly. And he's trying to do the... I think there's people around him. I, I do kind of like O'Malley. But I do believe O'Malley is surrounded by a lot of yes men that don't want to bring up the stuff that he needs to work on. Press conference. You, you need to work on your shit talk. The fact is, is you are getting 10-7, 10-8-ed by just about every single person that you fight, but you'll win the fight. And I think he's trying to do the Conor McGregor, the Chael Sonnen type of smack talk where it's very pre-rehearsed, it's snappy, it comes off kind of like badass if you can do it right, but it comes off really cringe if you can't do it right. And O'Malley, I will bump you up one. I will put you in B tier, but you need to change your approach to smack talk. And this is going, I know you're not going to do it. I know he's not going to give you tips on it. Study Dominic Cruz. Study Corey Sanhagen. Corey Sanhagen and Dominic Cruz have near a very similar style of trash talk of they're not going, they rarely ever just say things that are just blatantly mean, except for Corey Sanhagen when he talks about Chico Vera. But Dominic Cruz is just going to talk about how, yeah, no, I'm going to beat you. Your style's very sloppy. Your wrestling's bad. Your striking's mid. If O'Malley did that at a press conference and does what he does, I'll put him at B tier. But stop trying to pull off the McGregor thing. Go into a press conference and talk about Cheeto Vera, your striking's mid. Your wrestling sucks. I'm going to outbox you for five rounds straight. And then when you inevitably do it, people are going to call you the Prophet O'Malley. So yes, no, I'm going to put you in C tier. You're just doing the, a bad style for the way that you fight. If you're not going to rehearse your lines, change your style. Dominic Cruz. Dominic Cruz is... I, I, I'm putting him above Colby Covington. Dominic Cruz trolled everybody. Like, Dominic Cruz, when he... <coughs> Damn. I'm coming over a sickness. That's why there was no video yesterday, so bear with me. But Dominic Cruz... When he was in his prime, and even now he still has it, that's why they gave him a commentary job. Dominic Cruz is fast when he's talking shit about you. And it's not like a Chael Sonnen, it's not like a Conor McGregor. But Dominic Cruz is just going to talk about your technique and how bad it is. And then when you say something, it's like, I'm the best fighter on this planet. Like every fighter thinks they are. And I get it, confidence is key. But you say that to Dominic Cruz, it's like, why is that? It's just like, because look at all the people that I knocked out. Oh, that's cool. Um, what about him? Well, that, that I, I wasn't prepared on that. Why weren't you prepared? It, it's shit like that. But he puts it together and is like, yeah, no, your technique is sloppy. It's bad. Because everybody has weaknesses, but Dominic Cruz, because he has that mind of a martial artist, he can point it out. And O'Malley, learn from Dominic Cruz. You can pull this off well. John Jones. John Jones has a very similar style of smack talk to a, a do, um wait. John Jones has a very similar style to Dominic Cruz. I might have to put him in S tier. They're very similar. I'm trying to think. I'm gonna put him in S tier because here's the thing. I do have to take into account how like you can have the best smack talk in the world. But if you lose every fight that you're in, I'm going to be docking you. But if you have this style of trash talk, where you aren't just blatantly insulting somebody, and don't get me wrong, he was blatantly insulting Daniel Cormier. But for the most part, when he's talking shit about you, it's, it's kind of more in the effect of like, 
everybody's thought they were going to beat me. Like, I remember he did an interview with Ariel Helwani, and it is so, it's so eerie, because John Jones knows how good he is, and he's talking about, like, hey, do you, how do you feel about this guy potentially being able to beat you and how good he is, and he just blatantly says, it's like, everybody that you thought was going to beat me, everybody that the fans thought they were going to beat me, I choked Lyoto Machida out cold. Mauricio Sogunhua was a legend, and I made him look like an amateur. Glover Teixeira was one, had everything that you thought he needed to beat me, and I beat him for five rounds straight. It's smack talk like that, where he's not even really shit-talking you, he's just telling you how it's going to go, and the fact that he's been able to do as good as he has done. PDs aside, I'm have to put him in S tier. There's something that's just eerie about the way that he shit-talks you, and that sounds like a glaze. But there's just something about it that it has like that underlying like, yeah, you're probably going to fuck me up and you realize it. Shale Sonnen, S tier. Now, no, no, let me explain. John Jones is the epitome of the smack talk where he's not even really smack talking you. He's just telling you how it's going to go and it just magically comes true. Shale Sonnen is the best smack talker that pre-rehearsed his lines. He was the best at it. Okay, like I... There is one other person that I'll put an S to, and you probably already know who it's going to be. But Shell Sonnen was the original guy to just rehearse the lines, do them well. And he would, like, think about this. How many of you remember the Tito Ortiz um, Shell Sonnen fight? Not many of you. How many of you actually remember the um, Vanderlei Silva versus Shell Sonnen fight? You guys remember the shit talk that he did. Chael Sonnen has to be the only guy where the shit talk that he did before the fight is more memorable than the actual fight. He is probably the only dude that's like that. The only other person that I would say is up there with him would probably be a Conor McGregor. Because believe it or not, listen, God bless my brother. My brother believes that Conor McGregor actually fought Jeremy Stevens. Because he saw the smack talk that they did. He thought that Conor McGregor fought TJ Dillashaw because of the smack talk that they did. That's the only other person that I would put at a Chael Sonnen level of that. Their smack talk was so good people thought the fight actually happened. And it's more memorable than the fight. And that's why Chael Sonnen's in our S tier. Khabib Nurmagomedov. Believe it or not, Khabib is actually a B tier. I would put Khabib above A. Son O'Malley. <coughs> Dying. <clears throat> now, why would I say that? Khabib Smack Talk, he understood his style. For anybody who is in my comment section, because there, for, I did not realize this. There's a few Georgians that watch my content, and thank you guys for the support. But if you are from one of those countries where you don't speak English as your first language, like any, any place in there, okay? Understand that you're not going to be able to do the Smack Talk Unless you're Ilya Toporia, where you can just talk shit, rehearse lines, and beat them. You're just not going to be able to do it. However, if you take the Khabib approach and you speak in like this... <clears throat> let me get it right. I will make him pop like chicken. Like something like that, where if you said it in English, it just wouldn't work. There's something about the accent that just automatically makes it more intimidating. And it is, kind of... Like Dominic Cruz, but, you know, less linguistically talented. If Khabib could speak full, Eng um, full English, he would be very intimidating. <coughs> and if Khabib... Like, Khabib doesn't get enough credit for the promoter that he was. I think he's overrated in his fighting ability. But people don't get him enough credit for how good he was at promoting a fight. That's why he got the Conor McGregor fight to begin with. And... I'm going to put him in B tier, purely because when he did decide to talk shit about you, it was kind of like a matter of fact, like, I will smiss this guy. No, 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 no talk, no talk. Brother, smiss. Like, there's something about that that just works, and O'Malley just needs to adopt that simplistic form of sm um, smack talk. Islam Makachev, C tier. C tier, I might put him above O'Malley. Because at least Islam knows the smack talk that he has to go for. And it, yeah, I'm gonna put him above. I'm gonna put him above O'Malley. 
Because it's not like Islam is getting 10-7, 10-8ed at the press conference. Pyotr Jan called O'Malley a prostitute. And I remember that. Because it, it's just a line that just beats him out. I mean, Shido Vera. I'll, I'll never forget this, and I know I'm just dunking on O'Malley, but I, I do kind of like O'Malley. Let, let me explain something to you. When San O'Malley was on the MMA Hour, and Ariel Hawani got messaged by Cheeto Vera, Cheeto 10 7 O'Malley over the fucking phone. <laughs> like, I don't think he gets enough credit for that. Cheeto Vera was out smack talking O'Malley, but got destroyed in the lead up. Islam Makachev has never been little broed like that. Okay? Like, Islam Makachev, for all the fights that he's done, he, the only person that I would argue, and th this is going to sound like a glaze, but bear with me. The only person that I ever thought actually, like, little broed Islam Makachev, unironically, was Connor. Like, Connor, when he talks about the Dagestanis, he's the only dude that I think actually, like, gets to them with the shit talk. I know they pretend to be like, no, he's never been bothered by the shit talk. He made K Khabib Nurmagomedov lose his cool and get some of his homeboys kicked out of the UFC for life. Khabib lost his cool because of Connor. Connor won the mental warfare. Islam Makachev, the only person that's ever been able to beat him and little bro him, was Connor. And I can't, I'm not going to bring you down so much, but the fact is, is Khabib is just better at this style of smack talk than you, but you're better than O'Malley because O'Malley gets little broed a lot. Ilya Toporia. I'm going to put Ilya Toporia at the top of B tier. B plus, actually. Like, don't get, Khabib's mid B tier. Ilya Toporia's B plus. He can work on this. And yeah, I'm kind of going to have to get... I'm, I'm docking him a point. The only reason he's not an A minus is because he got trolled by Volkanovsky. Okay? And it's not really Ilya's fault, but you could have taken a better approach. Because Volkanovsky... Yes, no, you did beat the shit out of Volkanovsky. You did, okay? Like, I'm not saying that it's a it's an outright law. Damn! That was a voice crack. <coughs> Damn, that was bad. Okay, Ilya Toporia. It's not like you got trolled to the point that you lost the press conference, but your confidence carried you. And Volkanovsky just played the old man game, and you could tell that was kind of, It didn't get to Ilya, but Ilya was definitely like, Bro! I can't do my Conor McGregor Jr. stick if you're not going to play the Jose Aldo stick. Like, that's what annoyed him. And bro, even grab the belt. And, like, you have to be really trolled for it to be cringy if you grab the belt. Okay, like, that, like it admittedly was kind of cringe. But Ilya does have work to be done, and I think he could get really good at shit talk because he was beating out O'Malley on Twitter. I'm going to put Ilya Toporia at a B plus, and he can definitely move up. Israel Adesanya. <clears throat> this is tough. I don't know. I'm I, I'm gonna put him. You could say a high B tier, but I'm gonna put him at a at a mid B tier. Okay, I'm gonna put him in a mid B tier. Why do I say that? Because Israel Adesanya, for as big as of a star he was, it wasn't so much that he was a shit talker. And don't get me wrong. I know he did participate in trash talk. But he participated in trash talk when he knew he would win. Okay? He participated in trash talk against Robert. When I mean by knows he would win, I'm not saying the actual fight. I mean he would win the exchanges. Uh, yes, no, I am taking him down a whole tier. Because he didn't want to go at Strickland with um, smack talk. I'm sorry. Like I, I have to take you down. You got little broed by Strickland. That is what happened. Israel Adesanya was, um, participated in shit talk against Robert Whitaker because he knew he would win those exchanges. Paulo Costa pulled him into the shit talking contest and you can make an argument that Israel Adesanya was winning that too. But Jared Kennanier, he didn't really see a point because Jared Kennanier was kind of just like universally meh in the MMA community. Not a lot of people loved him. Not a lot of people hated him. He was kind of just meh. So he didn't see a point in shit talking him. Strickland, when he had to shit talk Strickland, didn't even try, just played the quiet game because he realized that he wasn't going to beat Strickland in a smack talking competition. He got 10 7 by the crowd on the way over there. Perth! Like, understand, Perth, Australia bullied Israel Adesanya. Didn't try to shit talk Jan Blahovitz because 
How are you going to shit talk Jan? How are you going to do that? I'm going to put him in B tier. He's just kind of mid at shit talk. He's good on the microphone, but just not great at shit talk. Does that make sense? There's a difference. Conor McGregor, S tier. S tier. Now, let me explain to you. These are the three different styles right here. The epitome of the three different styles. John Jones is the best at shit talk, but not really shit talking you, but more like a matter of fact, I'm going to beat you. Chael Sonnen is the best shit talker when it comes to pre-rehearsing that WWE style of lines. Conor McGregor is probably the most charismatic fighter that we've ever seen, especially in his prime, and the greatest mental warfare tactician in the history of MMA. Like, uh, here's the thing. It, modern Conor McGregor is not prime Conor McGregor. Prime Conor McGregor was a fucking menace on the microphone. Conor McGregor was everybody's favorite fighter in middle school. I'm not afraid to admit that. My original favorite fighter was GSP. Throughout middle school, it was Conor McGregor. And then it became GSP again. Because I realized GSP's king. But Conor McGregor in his prime... Dude, he... He destroyed Jose Aldo just through the getting into his head. I have to put you in S tier. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with me. He's a part of that trio. Ian Gary, D tier. Because I can't give you credit for any amount of shit talk if you're going to turn your comments off. I can't give you credit for that. The fact is, is every single time that you tried to come at Colby Covington, you're coming at Colby Covington in the style of smack talk that he's going to beat you in. So you automatically got 10-7 every single way. And then, your wife, like, here's the thing. I am, I'm not one of those guys that's like, just keep your woman quiet. I'm, that's not me. That's not me. However, I am a big major advocate of, if you're a manager of a fighter, shut up. Ali, shut up. Same thing with your wife. Your wife should not be making this more difficult for you. She is your manager. So I'm not even talking to her as like, she is the wife of an MMA fighter. No, no. I'm talking to her as the manager of you. She is actively making your career more difficult. I remember that bullshit that you were talking about. How your wife gave you shit for not wanting to fight Hamzat Shamayev in an elevator. That is the cringiest shit that I have ever heard. I don't care what relationship you're in. If you're with somebody that wants you to fight a dude in an elevator and gives you shit for not doing it, that's a red flag, dude. Like, that's not somebody that you want to be with, okay? And the fact that he said that so nonchalantly is something that honestly needs to be looked at. But Ian Gary, like, you every time that you talk shit, you either have to admit later that it was bullshit but not in a court of law, Neil Magny, Jeff Neal, you put him on a t-shirt for going to jail, but when you actually had to fight him, because you realized that Jeff Neal could 10-7 you by calling you a cock, you, you just didn't want to say anything to him. The only reason that you're coming at Colby Covington is Colby Covington doesn't give a shit what you have to say, and he's just going to continue smack-talking you because Colby Covington is a troll, and you tried to out-troll him, and you just got trolled even worse. And your management... Made Strickland come after you. So let me get this right. You got 10. Let me tell you all the people that have 10 7 you already, okay? MMA Guru, 10 7 you. Red Pill MMA, got you. Strickland, Colby Covington, Kevin Holland, even Joaquin Buckley's 10 7 you already. So, yeah, no. you. Where I would normally talk about like how you can improve your smack talk, here's your. This is what I'm going to say for you. Turn on your comments and just don't talk shit. D tier. Kamaru Usman. Ooh, okay. <sighs> I, I can't stress this enough. I am happy that Kamaru Usman is getting the credit that he deserves for his title run because it was a... Okay. Actually, let me go back on that. If you think Kamaru Usman's the GO, overrated. I'm sorry. Kamaru Usman's not the GO of welterweight. It is GSP. Look at their title runs. L different levels. But, I'm happy that people are recognizing that Kamaru Usman is one of the greatest champions that the UFC has ever seen because of how active that he was. I'm happy that people are, are giving him that credit. I'm happy that he's receiving those flowers. However, people are vastly overrating his ability on the microphone. I would argue the best smack talk that he ever had was against Leon Edwards in the second fight. Because Leon Edwards became confident and was talking about, like, head shot dead, head shot dead. And then... All Kamaru Usman had to say is just like, dog, you're, 
your corner was talking about how I was bullying you. They're bullying you, Leon. Like, Kamaru Usman was pretty good. However, dude was sounding pretty zesty against Tyron Woodley. Yeah, no, no, it, 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 it was pretty bad. If you get John Jones to make that face, I mean, like, you're pre that's pretty zesty, okay? And that, that's not a style of smack talk that I think is going to get you really far. But hey, I am talking about it, but I, I'm going to dock you a point. I'm going to put Kamaru Usman at the bottom of B tier or B minus. I'm going to put him at the bottom of B tier. And he did have that good line against Colby Covington, but outside of that, Colby Covington was winning the press conference. Leon Edwards, C tier. C tier, yeah. <coughs> I might even I might even put O'Malley above him because Leon Edwards outside of headshot dead in like talking about how he's going to beat up Colby Covington doesn't really participate in shit talk but he's on the list because he's a champion. So I kind of have to put him on here. But O'Malley at least is trying and every once in a while he'll say a good line. But Leon Edwards, I mean, outside of the Colby Covington fight, that's about it. Doesn't really say much. I mean, there's a reason that the UFC didn't really want him to become champion until he KO'd Kamaru Usman. Why do you think the fight was at elevation to begin with? They did not expect him to become champion. But they're happy he is now because he's a draw in England. So I'm going to put him in C tier. Just He's just not that great at shit talk. And, I, and not everybody has to be a shit talker. Not everybody has to be good at trash talk, but... Yeah. Henry Cejudo. Probably the best Krins. Probably the best Krins. He doesn't get enough credit. He is pretty funny. I'm going to put him above a Kamaru Usman. It, he is probably one of the best at the lighter weight classes at rehearsing lines. Did have a few good lines against TJ Dillasaw. But other than that, that's about it. Like, also said that if I lose to Marab, I'm probably going to retire. That was angry that the UFC didn't point a camera at him and then said how happy he was because now he's not going to retire. Uh, other than that, yeah, no, that there's nothing really special about his smack talk, but at least he's trying. Strickland, A tier. I would, I, I'm would i going to put Strickland above Colby Covington. Colby Covington's an A-. minus Because this, this is the way that I see it, and this is going to sound messed up. If my only way of beating you in a trash-talking competition is to bring up the fact that you were beaten as a child, I have already lost. Like, I have to condemn myself to being a bad person to beat you. Other than that, Strickland is going to 10-7 you every which way. He, dude, he bullied Israel Adesanya on the JRE. You have any idea how difficult that is to do? Do you have any idea how many fighters would love to be on the JRE to promote their own career? And all Strickland did was talk about how a bad person Israel Adesanya is. Like, it is kind of wild. Don't get me wrong, he has some problems though. Like, Strickland does have problems. Like, I, I, I'll say this. The amount of people that like think Strickland will, is like a, like a really profound mind is a little bit concerning. I would say this. I would say for every three things that he says that is really fucked up, he'll say one thing that's like, that's kind of a good point. But you have a 25% accuracy rating. Everything else is just crazy shit talk. Like, let's just chill for a second. That doesn't change the fact that he bullies everybody in a press conference. And I'm telling you this right now. O'Malley will never want to be at the same press conference as Strickland again. Because even O'Malley had to bring up his dad to stop him from bullying him that is how bad it was dude dude within the first five minutes was bringing up the open merits of o'malley bro has absolutely zero chill but i can't put him in s tier because i do believe there's a little bit of a double standard i this is what i think i think strickland if he's going to go as hard at people as he is going to go which is very very hard i think that he has to stop Getting into his own feelings when somebody has to come at him with something even worse. Here's the thing, Strickland. When people bring up your childhood, it's not that we actually think it's funny. It's the fact that that is the only thing that we can come at you for. We can't talk about... Like, think about that. If we call you crazy, you're going to be like, damn right. If we call you psychotic, you're going to be damn right. If we call you a bad person, you're just going to agree with us. Like, we, we can't come at you for anything. Except for your childhood. It's not that we like that you were hit. It's the fact that's the only thing that we can hit you with. But yeah, I'm going to put him at A tier. 
Nate Diaz, very, very, very unpopular opinion, B-. minus. What, what profound thing has Nate Diaz said? I'm going to beat, beat his ass, Stock, Stockton. Like, I like Nate. I do. I really do like Nate. But if we're going to be objective here and we're talking about shit talk, he is not a profound mind in shit talk. He's a gangster. Make no mistake about it. He is a legit gangster. He's a bad dude. What I mean by bad dude? I, he actually kind of seems like a cool guy. But he's definitely a dude that if you cross him the wrong way on the street, he strikes me as a guy that's not going to give you a second chance. I do. I, I, I can't stress this enough because the Stockton 209 army is bloodthirsty. But he's not that good at shit talk. I would actually argue his brother is a little bit better and maybe in the next video, if I ever do a part two of this, we can go throughout the entirety of UFC history and some people that I missed. But his brother was a bit more with it and was better at shit talk. Nate, dog, N Nate's just not that good. He was getting trolled by Connor. I don't think a lot of people remember that. But Nate's just not that good. I'm sorry, he's not. Dustin Poirier. Hmm. What do I got to say about this one? Dustin Poirier could actually... <coughs> Dustin Poirier is going to go above Kamaru Usman. I think Henry Cejudo puts more effort into his lines. I think Dustin Poirier... A lot of people think Dustin Poirier is a fake guy. And don't get me wrong. I, I think Dustin Poirier 100% got a demon inside of him. Okay, like Dustin Poirier, when he needs to pull out that dog in him, he'll pull it out. But like... I, people have sent me videos on like my TikTok and I've been then like, see, Dustin Poirier is a fake nice guy. And I and I'm not even kidding you. It'll be some fucking redneck from Louisiana comes up to Dustin Poirier. Like with a black eye, he just got home from a fight. And it'll be something like, How does it feel that Connor fucked your wife? Dog. If you came up to me after a fight that I won against Connor. And say that to me, I am going to smack you. Dustin's a better guy than me. I would not, this is not going to be settled with words. I'm going to be throwing hands. If, if that's what you say to me, if I'm representing Louisiana and you're somebody from Louisiana and you say that to me, you don't congratulate me on anything after beating Conor McGregor, dog, Dustin's a better guy than me. It would be, it would be on site after that. It'll be another video of like, see, he didn't shake Michael Chandler's hand. Listen, if there is a fighter that is secretly a serial killer, it is Michael Chandler. Michael Chandler, duh, there's red flags going off whenever I hear Michael Chandler talk. Michael Chandler's not on the list because he doesn't shit talk. But I'm always like, oh. like, when somebody seems like too good of a human being, those are the people that you need to watch out for, okay? Um, life advice for you, whenever somebody seems too good... Check the closet. That's all I'm saying. Michael Chandler, we, we adopted another kid from Africa. Cool. Check the fucking heart. I'm just kidding. But Michael Chandler 100% does strike me as a dude that I'm like, there's some darkness in you, dude. Like, you can't be an MMA, MMA fighter, be a great guy, can't be great family man without having some level of demons inside of you. Michael Chandler seems too good of a human being. Dustin Poirier, I'm not... Okay, yeah, back to the Michael Chandler thing. Dude, Michael Chandler was blowing blood into his face halfway through. Tried to fist hook him to get a rear naked choke. That is illegal, okay? Fist hooking somebody is illegal in MMA. And if you're going two fingers in and ripping my jaw up to get a rear naked choke... I ain't shaking your hand after the fight. I'll be like, bro, get your fingers out of my fucking mouth. Like, that, that, that's the problem that we're going to be having. But Dustin Poirier, I'm going to put him in B tier because every once in a while, he'll come up with a zinger. Like, when he was trolling Bobby Green, he was trolling Bobby Green. Like, I'm, I'm going to put him in B tier. He's pretty good. Justin Gagey. Mm, probably, probably C tier. Probably C tier. It's not that he's bad on the microphone. It's that he doesn't shit talk enough. For me to put him higher. He, he, uh, I'm trying to bring, I'm trying to think of the two times, because he's on this list for a reason, I'm trying to remember. Oh, the Charles Oliveira fight. 
He had some venom in him for that one. Like, for whatever reason, Justin Gaethje woke up and was like, you know what? I'm going to troll Charles Oliveira. Once a quitter is always a quitter. I'm going to bring the quit back out in him. What type of man that calls himself a fighter is going to quit against Max Holloway? That ain't me. I'm going to bring that quitter back out in Charles Oliveira. Lost the fight. Good smack talk, though. I, I do like that. Talking about missed weight. Charles Oliveira didn't miss weight because Tony Ferguson did break the scale. I, I will die on that hill. Uh, oh, Colby Covington. When Colby Covington, they did a press conference together. I, I forget what the fight was. But Colby Covington was talking about, like, uh... No, Colby Covington was like, I'm America's favorite fighter. And then Justin Gates... No, Justin Gates, he would, would t was talking about doing a pan uh, campaign with, uh... With, with Trump, right? And Colby Covington said some shit... Like, yeah, like, I'm America's favorite fighter. And Justin Gaethje just turns over at him and says, you a bitch. It's the simplistic smack talk that Justin Gaethje's good at. I, I, I give him credit for that. Probably lost some brain cells with CTE, but it's good when it comes to simple smack talk, C tier. Hamzat Shemaev, C tier. I am not a fan of, I'm not a fan of his smack talk, dude. I, I might put him above O'Malley. I'll put him above O'Malley, but other than that, dude, Hamzat smack talk is annoying me now. I'm not kidding you. Every champion over the welterweight, middleweight, and light heavyweight over since 2022, Hamzat Shemaev has called them out. So just like tweeting at him like, I will see you soon, brother. And then just nothing happens because Hamzat Shemaev either can't make the weight anymore or is just trolling. It's annoying. I, I just dislike it. When he's actually at a press conference, I, I smash everybody, I kill everybody, woo, and then slams down the microphone like an angry toddler, and then when Gilbert Burns, like, you have to be pretty bad at smack talk for Gilbert Burns to start trolling you. Hamza Shemaev, you're cool, I like you as a fighter. Smack talk needs work, you need to get a bit more active. C tier. Drink is duplicy, C tier. Yeah, no, I've, I, I'm gonna put him in. I'm gonna put him at the bottom of C tier, dude. The only time that he's actually really trolled somebody is Israel Adesanya, and had that one comeback line against Strickland. But again, he had to resort to bringing up child. Like Strickland's a tough dude to shit talk. I, I give him credit for that. I don't think Drickus is a bad person. However. You were getting trolled the entirety of that press conference and was only after he called you a closeted man did you start bringing up his childhood and then you claimed it didn't bother you. I'm sorry. If we're resorting to bringing up child abuse, it 100% bothered you. It did. Drick, it seems like a nice dude. I don't think he needs to be smack talking. I, I think he's actually a pretty cool dude. But if we're judging smack talk here, he did troll Israel pretty well, but other than that, I mean, trolling Israel Adesanya is not super difficult. Strickland was probably his most impressive smack talk in his entire career. I'm going to put him in C tier. Alex Pereira. I need to start moving some people, dude. Because Alex Pereira does not shit talk anybody, but he's. I'm going to put him in D tier. D tier. Do I really put him? Is he really at the le No, he's not. That's mean. I'll put him, I'll, I'm going to put, a, that's the beam, I'm not going any lower than that. I'm not going any lower. But Alex Pereira barely speaks English. He has only ever sit-talked one man, and that is Israel Adesanya. Other than that, doesn't really do anything. Uh, his Coates is probably one of the worst translators I've ever seen. Like, no live is that bad. Completely butchered his speech. I'm going to put him, at, yes, bottom of C tier. Great fighter. Not good at shit talk. I can't really blame him. Barely speaks English. Pantoja. I'm going to put Pantoja above a Drickus and above a Leon. I, I would probably put him below an O'Malley because at least Panto Pantoja trolls other flyweights. He trolls people that he's beaten before. But other than that, nothing really. He's on this list because he's a champion. I'm, I will rate champions. But other than that, nothing really special about the guy. Good fighter. We'll shit talk Roy Val, Brennan Moreno, people that he's beaten a couple times. And I think he beats Urseg. I think it's going to suck. Marab. <coughs> I'm going to put Marab at the um, 
I'll put Marab above Nate Diaz. Yeah, no, I, I, I actually I have to start doing it now. Marab social media trolling, and the way that he's rebranded himself, honestly, is pretty impressive. Like, it, it really is that good. Like, I will give him credit for this for a dude. Okay. Marab Davos Vili went from the dude that cracked his head open, diving into a iced over lake. Okay. Think about that. Marab went from that guy to actually doing some of the best social media campaigning and trolling in MMA in recent memory. He hired a lookalike of O'Malley to troll him. Understand, O'Malley's already confirmed that that's the next fight that's going to happen, okay? He doesn't need to keep doing this, but he knows that the UFC will do absolutely anything to make O'Malley fight Ilya and not do this fight, so he's going to continue the trolling, and I respect it. I'm going to put him at the near the bottom of B tier. He's more with he's more with it than Nate. Who do you think has more brain cells, Nate Diaz or Marab? You tell me. Now, and lastly, Jamal Hill. Another controversial one, but I'm telling you, dude, Jamal Hill is a sleeper pick. Oh, no, not up there, not up there. Well, that was a mistake. I'm sorry, my, my finger slipped. He's above Kamaru Usman, dude. Jamal Hill, when it comes to trolling, when it comes to shit talking, he's actually not half bad. I'm going to give him credit where credit is due. I think Jamal Hill is one of the most disrespected champions ever. I actually think Jamal Hill's more disrespected than Aljamain Sterling when it comes to what they did. I'm sorry, you Yuri Prohaska fans were so salty that Jamal Hill beat the dog shit out of Glover Teixeira. Way better than Yuri Prohaska ever did that you made up this idea in your mind that Glover Teixeira magically got washed up after fighting Yuri, a fight that Glover was winning. Yuri Prohaska barely beat Glover Teixeira. The skin of his teeth. Yuri Prohaska's barely better than Glover. Okay? But when Jamal... So, I, I'm, I'm going to say it again because it does bother me that much. Yuri Prohaska was losing a five-round fight against Glover Teixeira and got a miracle rear naked choke finish. Great fight. Okay, but y'all will look at the, what Jamal Hill did to Glover and talk about, ah, Glover's lost, it doesn't mean anything. Jamal Hill retired Glover Teixeira in front of his home crowd. He beat him so bad. The, oh, the last person to beat up Glover that badly, I'm not even kidding you, was John. Jo Jamal Hill did as good as John Jones against Glover. I'm not saying that Jamal's better than John Jones. I'm not saying that. I'm saying they say an opponent, and the last person to beat up Glover Teixeira that bad was John Jones, the go to light heavyweight. But y'all have branded Jamal Hill as a false champion. He, last time I checked, he has the same a number of title defenses as your boy Yuri. And I think Jamal Hill has a better chance at beating Alex Pereira because power is power and it doesn't make sense. And his social media trolling is also pretty good. I'm going to put him in B tier. But hey, that's just me talking about who I believe is the best and worst shit talkers in MMA in this current generation. Tell me what you think about the comment section down below. I know I'm missing a few Charles Oliveira off the top of my mind, even Armin Sarukian. But Armin kind of strikes me as kind of whiny. Maybe I'll make a part two to this, but these are the ones that stick out in mind for me. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. And I will see you all next time.